Section 5.1 on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Here's the definition of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. So let's say that we have some matrix A that it's and it is square. Okay, so it's n by n. Then lambda is an eigenvalue if there is a non-zero. This is a very important thing we have to keep in mind that the vector has to be non-zero. So there's a non-zero vector x such that a times x equals lambda times x. So again, lambda is a scalar quantity. It is not a matrix. So notice that what this says is that this matrix times vector x is equivalent to the scalar lambda times x. And the x, again, it is a non-zero vector, is called the eigenvector. In this example, we're going to show that the vector x which is given here, is an eigenvector of the matrix A, which we see here. Now to show that, we need to show that if I multiply the matrix A by the vector x, then I end up getting a scalar times x. And so that's going to tell us what the eigenvalue is. Whatever the scalar is, that is the eigenvalue. We've now taken the product of A times x, and we end up with the following result, that you get the vector 6, 3. Well, notice that this is simply 3 multiplied by the vector 2, 1. So based on our definition, we have that a times the vector x is equal to 3 times the vector x. So this tells us that x is indeed an eigenvector of a, and that the corresponding eigenvalue is lambda equal to 3. Let's think for a moment about what this means geometrically. So notice that we've taken the matrix A and we have multiplied it by the vector X and we said that we end up with the scalar lambda which is 3 times X. So what this really means is that A acts like a linear transformation on the vector X which turns it into a scalar times x. So geometrically, we have the, matri the vector x equal to 2, 1 graphed in the Cartesian plane, as you see here. And when we take the transformation or multiply a times x, we end up getting 3 times x. So the resultant vector is the vector 6, 3. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 3. So the resultant vector is simply a scalar multiple of the vector that we start with. So an eigenvector and eigenvalue have special properties, and that is when we multiply the eigenvector by the matrix A, which acts as a linear transformation, it scales the vector X up by some value, which is lambda, which is called the eigenvalue. So here we have, again, the vector x, and what you see in red is lambda times x, or 3 times x. On this slide, we're going to talk about how you go about finding the eigenvectors of a matrix A. And so let's start with um, the equation that we had before, which is A times x equals lambda times x. And now we're simply going to subtract lambda from both sides of the equation, which gives us a times x minus lambda times x equal to zero. Now there's a step that's missing here, and I will fill that in for you. We can rewrite this as a x minus lambda i times x equal to the zero vector. So why are we doing that? Notice that in the next step I want to combine a with lambda, and it would not be appropriate to say a minus lambda. The reason is because a is a matrix and lambda is a scalar. So how do we subtract a scalar from a matrix? So the goal really is to make this part of our equation, the lambda times x, look like a matrix. And we can do that because we know that the identity times any vector x is going to give us the vector x back. Right, so i times x is equal to x. 
And so we can rewrite a minus lambda x as a minus lambda i, and then we can take the x out. Notice that lambda i is now a matrix, and we're subtracting it from a, which is another matrix. So this is just another way of rewriting our original equation. So this equation and this equation are equivalent. Now we've got it. To find the eigenvectors x, all we need to do is solve this homogeneous linear system. Notice that this looks a lot like the null space of a matrix A, except it's not the null of A, it is the null space of A minus lambda I, right? So the solutions to this linear system would be called the eigenspace of A. And the eigenspace is simply the null space of A minus lambda I. Now we're going to find the eigenvector of this matrix A. Now notice this is the same problem that we dealt with previously. And here we're given the eigenvalue and we want to find the eigenvector. So we're going to find the null space of A minus lambda I to be able to find it. So again, we already know that the solution for this is x equal to the vector to 1. And so now we simply want to show that. We've written A minus lambda I. So A is the matrix we have here, minus 3 times I. So notice that when you multiply a scalar times the identity, as we have done in this case, that what that does is simply place the scalar along the diagonals of the identity matrix. So whenever you want to find lambda times i, you simply replace the ones along the diagonal in your identity matrix with lambda. So now our new matrix, lambda i, is simply 3, 0, 0, 3. When we subtract, we end up with the following matrix. So the goal is to solve the linear system a minus lambda i x equal to zero. So to do that, we could set up the augmented matrix for the linear system. But recall that since this column over here are just zeros, we can eliminate it. We don't need to deal with it. So we really just need to look at putting the matrix 1 minus, one minus 2, 1 minus 2, into reduced form and then solve for x. We've now taken the matrix A minus lambda i and put it into reduced row echelon form and we write the solution in parametric form and we end up with the following. Notice that we get the span of the vector to 1 and that is no coincidence. In fact, if we were to write the basis for the eigenspace, then we would see that what we get is exactly the eigenvector that we have here. All right, so that is how you find the eigenvectors for the matrix A. We're going to go through the same process with the following matrix. So we have this matrix A, and its eigenvalue is given. It's given as lambda equal to 4. And we're going to go through the process of finding the eigenspace to find the eigenvector of A. So we want to find the solution of a minus lambda i x equal to 0. And the first thing I did was to find the matrix a minus lambda i. So I just want to show you another trick. Remember that we said that to find uh, any scalar times the identity, we simply place the scalar along the diagonals of the identity? Well, if we want to find a minus lambda i, notice that that's the same thing as taking the diagonal elements of a and subtracting lambda, or the eigenvalue, for each of the diagonal elements. So whenever you see a minus lambda i, all you need to do is take a and subtract lambda from the diagonal elements of a. So when we subtract lambda, or 4, from the diagonal elements of a, we end up with the following matrix. Again, this is a minus lambda i, and now we need to take this matrix and put it into row echelon form so that we can find the solutions to a minus lambda i x equal to 0. So now we've found the solution. We've written it um, a minus lambda i x equal to 0 in parametric form, 
and we end up with the solution being x equal to the span of the vector to 1. And if we write the basis, which we have here, then we find that the eigenvector x is given by the vector to 1. So I could check my answer. And the way you would check your answer is to show that the product of a times x is equal to lambda, which is 4 times x. So take a moment and find the product to show that it's correct. And actually, um, that's one of the parts that I want you to do for your reading assignment. So the first question in the reading assignment is for you to write down the definition of the eigenvector and eigenvalue. And question two is for you to show that a times x for this example is equal to 4 times x. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about how you find the eigenvalues of any n by n matrix. But for now, we're just going to look at triangular matrices because the eigenvalues for triangular matrices are very, very easy to find. Let's consider a general 3 by 3 upper triangular matrix. So again, triangular means that if you look above or below the diagonal, then every, all the entries are zeros. So here we found a minus lambda i, which simply again means we've taken the eigenvalue and subtracted it from the diagonal elements of the matrix. So recall that the goal is to solve a minus lambda i times x equal to zero. Here we have a minus lambda i. Now if you remember our definition for an eigenvector, it says that the eigenvector is non-zero. Well, what does that mean? If we have a minus lambda i x equal to zero and we want x to be non-zero, it means that we want the linear system a minus lambda i x equal to zero to have non-trivial solutions. So notice in the other two examples, you should go back and look at them, that we found non-trivial solutions for a minus lambda i x equal to zero. So if we end up with x equal to zero, then we know that we have not found an eigenvector of a. So in order for a minus lambda i x equal to zero to have non-trivial solutions, again, here is a minus lambda i right here, we need for there to be some free variables. Well, how can we get free variables? We make sure that every column of a is, does not have a pivot. For that to be true, we either need a11 minus lambda to be equal to zero, or we need a22 minus lambda to be equal to zero, or we need a33 minus lambda to be equal to zero, which tells us that a11 is lambda, or a22 is lambda, or a33 is lambda. So we have it. If lambda is a11, a22, or A33, then the matrix, which we have here, this upper triangular matrix, has, right, if written in the form A minus lambda I, has non-trivial solutions. So again, to get the eigenvalues for a triangular matrix, they are simply the entries along the main diagonal. So I'm going to restate that in a slightly different way. If lambda is equal to a11, then that means that the value right there is zero. So x1 is a non-pivot column, or the variable that goes with x1 is non-pivot column, so we end up with non-trivial solutions. Likewise, if lambda is equal to a22, then this value is zero, and so we have a non-pivot column in column two. And if lambda is equal to a33, we have a non-pivot column in column 3, which tells us that in each of these cases, if lambda is a11, a22, or a33, that we end up with non-trivial solutions for a minus lambda ix equal to 0. For the last question in your reading assignment, I would like for you to list the eigenvalues of this matrix A. Right, the very last thing is this theorem. 
that says something about the linear independence of a set of eigenvectors for a particular matrix A. It says if we have eigenvectors V1 to Vr and they correspond to distinct, that means different eigenvalues, lambda 1 to lambda r, then the set of eigenvalues forms a linearly independent set. Now, this will become important for other things later, and we will do the proof together in class.